There was a say in the beginning of time. There was a podcast. Uh, Leonard, uh, yeah. welcome to Beer Bubbles podcast. Ah, thanks for having me. Uh, we met each other yesterday. Yeah. Was it yeah. a tough night for you as well? Oh, it was a wonderful night. Yeah. <laughs> but it, was it late? Uh, we stayed a little late, but it wasn't, yeah. uh, it wasn't, wasn't too, too tough. No. Yeah, it was great, I just spoke, uh, spoke, great company and great beers, so uh, it was easy. I, I just spoke to Steve at Bootstraps and they did an all-nighter out of it, so. Oh, no, I... Uh, no, I retired much earlier <laughs> than they did. <laughs> so, uh, Uinta Brewing Company. Yes. I really wanted to talk to you about Uinta because you're located in Utah. Salt Lake City. Dry state. Uh, regulations in Utah are quite similar to Sweden. Very similar. Uh, you don't have a monopoly to sell the beers. Would you? You the, do. The, huh? the state... The state of Utah owns mm. and operates uh, mm. all liquor stores. Okay. Uh, and they control, yeah, they control the retail situation for all all liquor and all heavy beer, which they classify as uh, everything above 5% mm. ABV. And and you've been around for a while? The, the brewery opened in 1993, so mm. we just celebrated our 30th anniversary mm. last year. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, and do you find it's... Difficult to, well, it, you have a different understanding of what's happening in Sweden, uh, but the rest of the US, do they understand your difficulties when it comes to uh, to distribution of your beers? Maybe? I, I, I think yes, uh, people understand that things are different in Utah than they are in most other US mm -hmm. states. Uh, that said, um, there are a lot of uh, different states that have peculiar laws mm. um, that are prohibitive in different ways. Um, ours is most similar to the Swedish system mm. with the government control um, and the, the separation of beers by ABV yeah. level. I think uh, in Canada, in I think it's Montreal or something that has a similar system as well. Great city. Yeah. <laughs> Great city. Yeah. You, you'd never know that they had any restrictions on it. Okay. <laughs> So, uh, yesterday you had a small, like, pre-festival at Oliver yeah. Twist. Yeah, great. Uh, great and today event. the actual festival starts. Uh, what are your expectations? You know, I'm coming in with a clean slate. Mm. Uh, I've never experienced this festival before, mm. and I'm very excited to be here. Mm. Uh, and I'm just going to see where it takes me. Because your beers have been here maybe 10 years. And I think every year we've gotten something in from Uinta to the BA Monster. It's been, there was a little gap there, mm. uh, but I, I certainly remember, I, I did send beer last year. Mm. Um, wasn't able to attend, unfortunately. Nice. Um, so big improvement this year. Mm -hmm. uh, but with uh, with the tenders that we've won with System Bulligat mm. uh, this year, I was mm. able to justify the trip to uh, my go. superiors and of course <laughs> and of course with the cooperation of the Brewers yeah. Association um, I was able to come out as part of the trade mission. Mm -hmm. But how does that cooperation with BA work? Uh, well we work pretty closely with them on certain things uh, uh, lobbying for legislation and of mm -hmm. course with their events and mm -hmm. um, we've got a long-standing relationship with the BA uh, with this trade mission mm -hmm. in particular uh, they offer some support and some organization, mm -hmm. uh, logistical support mm -hmm. to, to come out here and share our beers with, mm -hmm. with folks here in Stockholm. Uh, I'm not going to keep you long from, from the stand where you actually have your beers, yes. which you couldn't find. <laughs> <laughs> you <laughs> I, had to, I had to go to Oliver Twist and wanted to get, get you know, one of your beers. <laughs> I, I, uh, I, I showed up a little late. Uh, I'm a beer guy. I yeah. showed up a little late. Uh, I missed the boat, so I took a bus. Uh, okay. <laughs> and I didn't, I didn't check the coolers before we got started. <laughs> But now so you'll I'll, have to find it anyway. I'll, I'll have to go and, and remedy the situation. Yeah, but we do have both of uh, both of the beers that I sent over yeah. at our at our. And what beers are those? One of them is the Hopnosh. So Hopnosh is our uh, flagship IPA. We've been mm -hmm. making that beer uh, since the early two thousands. Mm -hmm. It's a bit a, different uh, in the. You, you've changed the. Uh, 
the look of it a bit. You know, uh, with that beer in particular, we we make three different beers under the Nosh name. We've got Hop Nosh, mm. Hazy Nosh, and uh, Trop Nosh, which mm. is a modern tropical style. Mm. Um, so as a separate sort of line, we decided to move away from our uh, traditional branding yeah. on that one. Uh, we but the same colors. Same. Uh, it's the it's... same The same look, and then the colors change. Yeah. Mm. OK. Uh, for the other beers. But the, 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 but the old uh, Hop Nosh. Uh, the old hopnosh was still the same color, but a bit different in. in uh, yeah, the the old hopnosh uh, used our our sort of uh, core branding style, mm -hmm. which is a, a like a WA, WPA style mm -hmm. uh, graphical branding that mm -hmm. we work with uh, a, a great agency mm -hmm. um, illustrator agency that mm -hmm. we've used for a number of years. Uh, I've got one question for you. Uh, one hard question. Yes. Because uh, you can't have an interview without one hard question. It's gotta be. It's gotta uh, play hardball. <laughs> This is not the, you can have this beer for the rest of your life. This is even worse. Okay. Uh, the Grim Reaper is coming to collect today. Okay. And you can have one more beer. Any brewery, uh, in production, out of production, doesn't really matter. What is the beer you take as the last hurrah? Oh, that's a tough one. Mm. That's a tough one. There's a lot of great beers out there, but I'm a yellow beer guy. Mm. Uh, so, of course, it's going to be a lager beer. Mm. Uh, I think I'd go with our 801 Pilsner. Yeah. It's a it's a South German style Pilsner that we've been making for a number of years. It was my favorite Utah brew, brewed beer uh, before I started working for Uinta, mm -hmm. and uh, it is the beer that is most frequently depleting from my fridge mm -hmm. at home. And you probably get a keg home because you want to cheat the Grim Reaper for a while. Yeah, they, uh, they they are very good to us <laughs> at the brewery. And, uh, yes, we do have a very generous take home policy. Yeah, okay, well, thank you very much. Thank you, Leonard. Absolute thank pleasure. You. I'll I'll see you around today. Oh, uh, uh, days just started. Yes, no? <laughs> I'm looking forward to mm -hmm. it. Uh, I, I was instructed to make sure to talk about the uh, the tenders that we've won. Oh yes, uh, yes. This year, mm -hmm. uh, we do have Alpenweizen. It's a fruited American Hef mm -hmm. uh, that just released last week in System Balaga. Mm -hmm. uh, just a one-time offering. Mm -hmm. And then uh, coming this November, I believe November 1, mm -hmm. uh, Hopnosh will release in a 16 ounce can. Oh, nice. Uh, huh? in the, as a West Coast IPA. Oh, nice, nice. Well, thank you very much, Leonard. Cheers. And Cheers. Uh, let's have a great day today. Looking forward to many Cheers. more of these. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. There was a say, in the beginning of time, there was a podcast.